Hi, I'm Hugh from SRI, and this video we're going to show you how to install the 10 position vial gas auto sampler for greenhouse gas GCs primarily, but could be used for other purposes also. This is a typical greenhouse gas GC configuration. There's an electron capture detector for detecting nitrous oxide and a FID with a methanizer for detecting methane and CO2. This particular one also has a thermal conductivity detector for detecting hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen at the same time. So I've got my gases hooked up to the GC, I've got my argon for the TCD, and I've got nitrogen for the ECD and the FID methanizer. And then this is the, the auto sampler, this box here. So the auto sampler um, has to be connected to some kind of a power source, which is this um, common 24 volt um, desktop power supply just like for a computer. So that plugs in and then when it does the display lights up. So um, this allows you to control the position of the vials independently of the GC if you want to. You can just push the up button and the little valve inside moves. There's also this part of the kit which is a solenoid valve, a pressure regulator, and then a 60 milliliter syringe with a lure lock connection. So this has to be connected to the sample outlet port. Nice and tight, should just sit there by itself. Then some kind of gas needs to be connected to the inlet of the pressure regulator. In this case, we're going to use just room air from a, a small air compressor. So we'll just stick the, the gas connection there. And then the electrical connection goes back to the left side of the GC. I'll point to it here. You can see that. So you could also plug a vacuum pump into the same thing, right? So it's the same power outlet that the vacuum pump would plug into is what powers this um, auto sampler control. Okay, so physically that's how the the auto sampler connects. Now we 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 ship it without the syringe needles installed just for safety reasons. So to install the needles you take the top off and then these um, syringe needles we're using 27 gauge one and a quarter inch syringe needles. There's the, the BD part number but it's one and a quarter inch long and these are about 20 cents each so they, they come like this with a little protective cap that that has a clicking sound right when you when you push it kind of clicks into place so then you can put the syringe needle onto the the receptacle for it and then you can tighten it with the using the outer little sh um, sleeve as a wrench and then when it's tight you just pull it right off and then the syringe needle is installed. I find, because I'm right-handed, I find it's easier to start with the two left ones and then work my way this way because otherwise sometimes you can stab yourself with the needle which we don't want to do. Right? So, so rather than go down this, I'm going to go to here and put in the needle for the number 10 position and then work my way to the right until all the needles are installed. Okay, so um, some, how do you know the needle is properly installed? Well, the way we do this is we use one of the vials that's going to go in the auto sampler, but we fill it with a little bit of water. So, I'm going to put a little bit of water in one of these vials. Not all the way to the top, just just like a quarter of the way. And then I'm going to plug my my pressure in so that I've got pressure here now. And then I'm going to look for bubbles when I'm in the right position. So I'm going to go all the way back to position number one, which is this one, right? So I can put this on like that, but it's easier to see with that off. So I have to go over to the computer just for a second to turn on this solenoid, which is controlled by Relay D. 
So when I turn on the solenoid, the gas, which is just room air, is going to go backward through the loop of the sample loop of the GC. And then from there, it's going to go to the auto sampler. I forgot to connect this tube from the auto sampler. This is the tube that carries the sample from the vials into the GC's sampling valve. So I'm going to go turn the Relay D on on the software. And you probably didn't hear it, but the solenoid made a, a definite little clicking sound when the, when the solenoid turned on. And now there should be gas coming out of that syringe needle. So to prove that that's true, I'm going to see how the bubbles, you can see the bubbles filling up the, the water. Now that does pressurize the vial, so you've got to release pressure. And then I'll go to position number two on the auto sampler and I'll look for the bubbles in position number two. So you can test as you go and make sure that as you're installing these needles that it's actually um, not leaking and it's flowing. So that's the first step. So um, we've put we've put all ten of the needles in and tested them with the water so that we know that, that each one of them is working. So now we have our sample vials. Now these aren't really samples, I'm just showing you how it works. But basically you take your, your sample bottle and you, um, you stick it down onto the needle and it bottoms out on that little plate there. And so you can load up as many samples as up to ten. I guess that's that's the maximum. So now maybe there was pressure in the bottle. So when the valve moves to position number one, whatever pressure was in that bottle is going to go out through the loop of the gas sampling valve and then as just as a visual aid I have this syringe. You don't really have to have the syringe connected. Normally you just let the gas exit out this lure lock fitting but it's just helpful to be able to see what happens. So, for example, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to go and push the button that takes me all the way back to position number one. So that now it's supposedly the, the valve has selected that particular needle. So then I'm going to take another syringe and I'm going to just suck in 20 milliliters of air and then I'm going to try to pressurize that bottle with all 20 milliliters. So if the vial is already under some pressure, when you poke it down onto the needle, the pressure goes backward through the loop of the gas sampling valve and then out this port and you can see that it's the pressure in the vial has pushed the syringe backward until it reaches approximately atmospheric pressure. If I were to remove the syringe, it would really equilibrate to atmospheric pressure. So that's going to happen as soon as the, um, the valve selects port number one. So to take a sample out of the valve, we're going to have to pressurize that vial to some known pressure, right, which is controlled by whatever pressure I have here on this pressure regulator. So when I go over to the, the computer and I actuate Relay D. Relay D is what turns that solenoid on. When I actuate Relay D, now you heard the click, and now the pressure is going backward through the loop of the vial, valve, and then down, and it's pressurizing this vial, so to 10 psi, roughly. So when I release Relay D, watch what happens to the syringe. All the pressure that's building up in the vial right now is going to is going to push backward through the loop, and then exhaust out, and that syringe needle, that syringe plunger should then move backward. You can see, see how the pressure that's stored in the vial is pushing the syringe backward. So when you're operating you wouldn't have the syringe there. The syringe is really just so you can visualize what's going on. So that's how the sample gets from the vial and then into the loop of the gas sampling valve and then when that valve in the GC rotates whatever's in the loop gets pushed onto the column. So the question is now how do we how do we avoid um, contaminating the next vial with the residue of the gas that's in 
the tubing and all through the system right now? Well, the answer is that we're going to, when we pressurize this vial to 10 psi, we approximately diluted it by 50 percent. So if we do that over and over and over again, let's say 10 times during the analysis, then now whatever contamination was in that vial originally would be reduced by about a thousand times. So by pressurizing, releasing, pressurizing, releasing, we're always pressurizing with more gas than was there to begin with. So eventually all the tubing between the vial and the exit gets cleaned out with the previous contents of vial one but diluted a thousand times with whatever the um, dilution gas is. We're using room air but you would probably use nitrogen or, or argon or some other gas to, um, to, to do the pressurizing of the vial and then the cleaning out of the tubing before indexing to the next position. So we're going to set it up now so that on the software we can show you how to control the position of which vial is selected rather than controlling it with this little control box here manually. We're going to show you how to do that um, through the GC. So there's a cord connected to the auto sampler that looks like this and it plugs into the GC on the side. Now not every GC that we manufacture has that plug but if you buy this with that then it definitely will and if you buy this after buying that then this plug here is something that's relatively easy to install. I think we even have a video that shows how to do that. But now to control the position of this um, auto sampler, here's this little um, control box that shows the position, right? So right now it's showing position number one. And there's really only two things that can happen. A contact can close and make the position index by one, right? So by pushing this, I made it go from position number one to position number two. Well, I can do the same thing on the software using relays A and B, right? So, so I'm going to have the camera look over here while um, I click the relay here on the software. So I'm going to click relay A and now the position has incremented from position 2 to position 4 because I clicked it twice. And then you can also go all the way around back to the home position which is position number 1 and you can do that either by holding this button down for a second and then you hear a go all the way around back to position number one or there I'll go up to position number two and then I'll click relay B here on the software and that does the same thing as pushing the buttons on the little control box. So in the event table for your um, Peak Simple software you go edit channels and then to the event table. So if I want as part of my method I want to change the position from its current position, whatever that is, to the next position, I need to add an event in the software. So I'm going to do this at um, five minutes into the analysis. Why? I'm just, it's just an example. Usually you do this at the end of the analysis or the beginning, but just to show the mechanics of how you do it. So you go to the event time, you put in the time that you want the event to occur, and then you click relay A and then on. So now that event shows up in my list of events. But you don't want to leave it on. You want to turn it on and then turn it off after a second or two. Just like pushing a button, you take your finger off the button. So I'm going to add an event at 5.05, which is like three seconds, and then I'm going to say relay A off, right? So that will cause the stream selector valve to index to the next vial at five minutes. So, um, there's many possible ways that you can arrange the, the logic of when to sample the vial, but the idea is that once you get to the vial position, that you also then turn relay D on and wait a few seconds, and then turn relay D off, because what that does is once you've positioned the selector to a particular vial, you need to pressurize the vial and then you need to release the pressure through the loop and that's how you get the sample out of the vial and then subsequently in the analysis you do this 
maybe 10 more times, pressure release, pressure release. Once the injection is made, it really doesn't matter. It just goes through and then out. It doesn't do anything to the GC, so you can do this event as many times as you want. So you'd go back to that event table and you'd put in a time. I'm just going to pick a time of seven minutes. So at seven minutes, you turn relay D on, and that would turn on the pressure to pressurize the vial. And then let's say you determined by trial and error that a tenth of a minute, six seconds, was plenty of time to do that. So you'd put in another event at 7.1 minutes where you turn relay D off, right? So you do that sequence many times until you had enough pressures and releases during the course of the analysis, not, not before the analysis, during the analysis, to clean out the connecting tubing. So maybe you'd repeat that sequence five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, as many times as you thought necessary. So that's, that's how this is supposed to work. And um, thanks, and of course, call with any questions.